Hey guys, my name is Sarah, this is Rue, and we are camping in Big Sur. So this is actually our third time in Big Sur. It's located on Highway 1 and has some of the most beautiful coastal views in the nation. The first time I visited, I was just passing through on my way to my first assignment in San Francisco. The second time, Rue and I car camped at the same campground that we stayed at this time. And the third time, we camped in the Airstream. It was a great first camping trip for me with the Airstream because it's only an hour and a half away from my current home base and the campsite I stayed at had water and electric hookups. Disclaimer, this is not our campsite. We are currently parked on the side of Highway 1, which is fine to do during the day, but you cannot camp here overnight. We stayed at Riverside Campground, which is right along the Big Sur River, nestled in all of the redwoods. It's super quaint, the RV spots are a decent size, and the staff is extremely friendly and helpful, and even spoiled Rue a bunch. <laughs> it turned out my campsite was situated at an angle, which I was not prepared for, and it made backing in such a struggle. Everyone's just watching. Yay, fun. Fun times. I tried to do it by myself quite a few times before I finally gave up and asked one of the staff members for help. And they were like, oh my goodness, I would have helped you if I knew you were alone in the first place. Okay, someone very friendly from the campground helped me back in and now we are in our spot. Phew. So that's what a normal straight back in campsite looks like. And there's mine. So I had to drive in from that way. So as you can see, I had to make a complete U-turn. That was fun, but hey, I did it. With some assistance, but I did it. Once I got situated, I actually really ended up liking my campsite because of the angle it was situated at, it actually made it a lot more private because there wasn't anyone directly beside me or in front of me. This is probably the most poppin' area of Big Sur. It's got hotels, restaurants, campgrounds, and it even has gas stations, which are super expensive, so I highly recommend filling up before you get there. It's very close to some of Big Sur's more famous landmarks, like the Bixby Creek Bridge and McWay Falls. It's close to a couple state parks and Pfeiffer Beach. If you don't want all of the amenities or to be super close to all the action, there are a couple campgrounds about 45 minutes south that situate you right next to the coast. I checked out Kirk Creek Campground right around sunset and the view is amazing. These sites have been booked out every time I've looked, so reservations are hard to come by, but if you plan farther out than I do, you might have better luck than me. There is a ton of beautiful scenery and hiking in Big Sur, but that being said, there's not many dog-friendly hiking trails. Every time I've come here, I've had Rue with me. All of the things I did during this trip are dog-friendly, but they're fun things to do whether or not you bring a dog. I highly recommend downloading Google Maps and planning what you want to do ahead of time because there is virtually no service here. The first day we got here, we went and got an early dinner at the River Inn restaurant, which is within walking distance of Riverside Campground. Then we went to Pfeiffer Beach to watch the sunset, which is famous for its purple sand and arch, which I think is called Keyhole Arch. There's a certain time of the year when you can see the sunset through the arch. I don't know when that is but it's not April. I love that after a day of adventuring and traveling, I still got to come home. It's so nice. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. 
Waking up in my Airstream the next morning was so surreal. I got to wake up in my own bed, follow my normal morning routine, and then open up my door to an entirely new environment. Not only was it super comforting for me, but for Rue as well. Traveling is so much less stressful for her now that our home can go with us wherever we go. Are we home? <gasps> what? We brought our home with us? Preparing for this trip was super easy because I have all of my belongings with me and I didn't have to pack anything. And it's so luxurious. Like I have my own bathroom, my kitchen, I have heat. I'm so glad I decided to purchase a travel trailer versus an RV because wherever I go, I can just unhitch and go explore the area with my Jeep. We wanted to do at least one hike. Well, I did, and Rue's just here for the ride. And we decided to do the Kruik Shank Trail, which is about an hour south of where we were staying. But I'm not complaining because I love a long, beautiful drive. The beginning of the trail has very steep switchbacks with no shade. I promise you it's totally worth it for that coastal view. After that, it gets nice and flat before it takes you into the redwoods. If you bring your dog, make sure they have their Lyme disease vaccine and check for ticks after your hike, because I did find one on Rue. This trail is out and back, so you can turn around whenever you want. Next, we drove about 20 minutes south to Ragged Point and got a late lunch at the restaurant there. And the grounds are super beautiful. There's a famous proposal spot there. There's even a nature trail that takes you down to a black sand beach and apparently a 300 foot waterfall. But we could not do it because the wind was so strong, it was about to blow us over. After lunch, we made our way down to Elephant Seal Beach, which I have been to before, but I just couldn't resist. I find these creatures so fascinating and entertaining. You can see the seals there year round, but the months with the largest populations are January, April, and October. It's April right now, and I totally did not plan that. There's an easy coastal trail that takes you away from the crowd, and in my case, close to the babies, which were so adorable. But once again, the wind was so strong, we did not make it too far. Rue and I were pooped after that and decided to start our hour and a half journey back up the coast. The timing was beyond perfect because we were heading north and we got to see a beautiful sunset over the ocean. Our last full day looked like it was going to be a total bust. I checked the weather before we left for our trip and it said it was going to be mostly rainy this day. Mind you, there's no service, so I couldn't check to see when or if the rain was even going to pass. So once noon rolled around, we geared up for the rain and decided to hit the beach regardless. As I was pulling out of the campground, the rain stopped and the sun started to peek through the redwoods and it's like I planned it or something. We went to Garapada Beach, which has plenty of parking and easy access right off the one. The beach is a half mile long and supposedly used to be clothing optional in some spots, which I find hilarious because I haven't had the slightest desire to strip down to even a bathing suit on any of the California beaches I've been to so far. Even though this beach is dog friendly, there wasn't much going on there. So we decided to head about 10 miles north to Carmel Beach, which we've been to before and we know there's a lot more dog action there. The sun made an appearance, which was awesome because it really enhanced that light sand and blue water and it was absolutely gorgeous. We made our way back down to the campsite and I decided to finally make a campfire for my last night. I chilled, drank some beer, 
and listen to the relaxing sounds of my neighbor's kids screaming. <laughs> but honestly, this was such a great first camping trip. Having hookups and the local amenities was a great way to ease into camping, but I'm obviously not a huge fan of having neighbors in such close quarters. This trip has been a big eye opener for me as far as wanting to boondock. That being said, you should totally drop a comment of your favorite boondocking spots in Central and Northern California. I would love your guys' recommendations for my next camping trip. Unfortunately, my time in California is coming to a close. I've been working in the Bay Area for about a year now, and I can't stay longer than one year for tax purposes as a healthcare traveler. I'm not sure where I'm headed to next, but I'm hoping for Oregon or Washington. That being said, I've been told that the RV parks are probably fully booked because it will be summertime, which is their peak season. So as nice as it is to be traveling with my home now, there's now that additional challenge of finding a place to park it for three months. I'll keep you guys updated, but please shoot me an email if you have any tips in regards to this. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to follow along my Airstream journey. And I'll see you guys next time.